Question 3a. Complete uh, table 3.1 by placing one tick in each row. Uh, indicates the sign of each type of energy change. Okay, so we have three energy change, bond energy, enthalpy change of atomization, and enthalpy change of formation. Okay, so for, uh, for these uh, three enthalpy, first you need to know at least the definition. Uh, the bond energy is the energies required to break one mole of a particular covalent bond in gaseous state. Okay, so from this definition, we know that energy must absorb, means it must be always endo. So it's positive. Bond energy must be positive. Okay, for the enthalpy change of atomization, uh, is one mole of gases atom form from its elements. So elements now try to form gases atom. So it need to absorb, absorb the energy. So that's why it's always positive. Okay, enthalpy change of formation. Uh, this one you learn in the AS. Uh, is always uh, uh, can be negative or positive so uh, still uncertain can be negative or positive so you just put the tick here okay part b define standard enthalpy change of atomization uh, this one i told you just now uh, enthalpy change when one mole of gases atom is produced okay so this one must be there gases atom one mole from its elements and the elements must in the standard state and also this happen under standard condition okay, standard state means uh, for example um, sodium must be solid oxygen must be gas and so on okay, standard state and it's happen under standard condition which is 298 Kelvin 1 ATM or 101 kilopascal okay so for part c uh, table 3.2 we're going to use uh, some of these values for the uh, calculation uh, the latest energies calculation okay so for this part uh, calculate the latest energy for the silver oxide uh, and must use the values from this table 3.2 um, try is actually better for you to uh, draw the energy cycle or the bond halo cycle uh, let's start with the um, the elements okay so the silver solid with oxygen gas form the silver oxide so this is a formation okay given in the table you can check it later and uh, we try to uh, uh, do the uh, metal first Okay, so the silver at uh, <coughs> silver solid, so we need to undergo uh, atomization. So uh, it's uh, involved two mole, so it's two eight five times two. Okay, after that, these uh, gases atom need to undergo ionization. The first ionization of uh, silver uh, is uh, seven three one. Okay, so it's two mole. Then here also times two. Okay, after that, uh, the uh, gases ion of silver is formed. Now we need to atomize the uh, oxygen molecule. Uh, so remember, try to choose the O O double bond. Okay, so when this bond break, it will form the gases atom. Uh, because it's just need uh, one mole of gases atom therefore we just need to break half of the mole or half of the bondings only so it means uh, 496 which is the bond energies of the OO double bond okay so now it's half right so remember uh, half of the bond energies of OO double bond okay is actually the atomization for the oxygen okay means at the end you get one mole of gases atom of oxygen here and this gases atom of oxygen will gain the two electron so this is the ea1 and ea2 so just sum up together okay at the end you get this the gases ion of the silver and the gases ion of the oxygen so it means oxide and after that 
these two gases ions uh, they combine and form the solid so this one is the latest energy then okay so try to sum up everything so this one plus this one plus this one plus this one okay plus this one equal to the formation here so means is this one this is a relation okay after that rearrange you should get the latest energies of silver oxide is negative 2968 kilojoule per mole okay part d suggest the trend in the magnitude of latest energy of silver compound uh, so we have a silver uh, sulfide silver oxide okay and this uh, silver uh, uh, selenide okay this one uh, because we know that silver is always the same uh, so the difference is the the group uh, 16 elements okay so now we have this uh, uh, different uh, charge density uh, anion so we know that the oxide is smaller smallest in size so it has the greatest charge density and of course when down the group the charge density is getting lesser so we know that okay the attractions between the silver ion and this uh, n ion is getting weaker so release lesser energy so that's why uh, the most exothermic must be the ag2o this silver oxide okay and followed by this ag2s and ag2se right so just explain like this uh, charge density of anion decreases okay because getting larger same charge okay therefore less attraction between the ions the silver ion and this uh, anion okay part e silver sulfide uh, ag2so3 uh, so it's sparingly soluble in water uh, so part one give the expression of solubility product ksp for this uh, salt okay so we just consider the concentration of the ions form okay so it's a silver ion concentration of silver ion square okay because the coefficient is two here times the concentration of the sulfide ion okay so this is the expression okay part two calculate the equilibrium concentration of silver ion in the saturation solution of this silver sulfide okay so first uh, we know that uh, the x is represent the solubility of the salt so now we try to find the x first okay so let's say x mole of the silver sulfide dissolved and it will form 2x mole of silver ion and 1x mole of sulfide okay so this one we don't consider we substitute the 2x and x into the expression so we get this okay so the ksp already given this value so it's equal to uh, <clears throat> 4x cubed 4x cubed after that find the x x you should get this Okay, so because now it's asked the concentration of silver ion so it's actually 2x so you just use 2 times the x here so you get 3.11 times 10 to the 5 okay this is a concentration of silver ion okay part f the standard enthalpy change of solution for this uh, silver nitrate in water silver nitrate yeah in water is a uh, positive 22.6 kilojoule per mole suggest how the feasibility of dissolving silver nitrate in the water change with temperature uh, when they ask this kind of question so you sh you must relate uh, relate with the gibbs energy because it's about feasibility so uh try to use this one delta g equal to delta h minus t delta s okay so from here we know that because it's uh, from the solid now dissolve in water so the randomness increase means the entropy also increase so delta s therefore must be positive and already given delta h is positive also 
So from here we know that since the delta H is positive, delta S also positive. So therefore when temperature increase, the negative T delta S will become more negative. So means at the end, the delta G will be more exo, means more negative. So it become more feasible. So this is how you relate the feasibility with delta G, the Gibbs energy. Okay, so first you need to explain, okay, feasibility increases as temperature increases. Why? Because the negative T delta S will become more negative when temperature increases, means when T increases, negative T delta S will be more exo. Therefore, delta G will become more exo. Okay, that's all. Thank you.